Yo, what up, Grab Beside you here to let you know that the champion you see right here on your screen is the Fusion Champion, legendary champion you can obtain in the month of September for playing Raid Shadow Legends, for doing the events and tournaments, and everything else that will be going on just to obtain this free, free legendary champion right here. In this video, I want to take a look at his skills, abilities, and all that to let you know whether I'll be going for this fusion or it's one that you want to skip. Now, take note as we are going into this, I'm coming into this fusion from a negative standpoint which means i'm tired of fusion so i'll be looking at this champion for loopholes to find every reason why i should skip it especially on my noob to pro that is right here that's the mindset i'm coming in. i'm like not again so i'm not a hap i'm not happy like oh wow fusion no it's more like oh not again so that's how i'm coming into this hopefully you guys take a look at this one and decide on your own whether you want to go for it or not remember fusions are not the beginning and the end of the game you will still obtain these legendary champions eventually for free when you pull shards but if you want to obtain them right now you have to go through all these loopholes the good thing is that this one will be a fragment summoning fusion so this one is kind of a little bit easier than the old school fusion we are seeing these days a lot so what's this champion's name what's his abilities and how will it be used in raid let's find out from the creators themselves let's see what playroom has to say about it He's coming on the August 31st. We don't have seven whole days to prepare for him. No, we just have only two more days. August 31st, this fusion is launching. Because it's a fragment fusion that gets you don't need a lot of prep, right? You don't need a, a whole week of fusion prep. I, that came as a shocker to me. On Thursday, the August 31st, we are planning to launch a champion fragment event with a new champion called Strategos Islin. Let's just go with Islin, right? Isline, I don't know. Strategos Isline is his name. And um, Faction was, he's from the faction of High Elves faction. And his rarity, legendary, is, de is a defensive based champion, uh, Magic Affinity. All right. Playdom says this Isline is a tanky champion with some nice control abilities and specific heal mechanics. They are not wrong. Will definitely come in handy in PvE content where the crowd control is a real deal. Hydra can be his place to shine thanks to his healing abilities as well as the Iron Twins Fortress. Basically, they are saying he's a PvE champion, right? We are part of um we are apart from his massive heals, the decreased speed debuff on Islin A2 will be a must for Ion Twins. Who still has a problem with Ion Twins? Newer players who are coming into the game. That's who like my noob to pro then that's all they have to say about him so it's not like a two-page document where they, they didn't even hype him much they just told him he's a pve champion that does decrease speed and he's tanky those are the two things they have to say about him so let me read out his skills for you guys to see if it's going to be one that you want to go for or one that you want to skip if you don't have enough resources so that's this champion right here his character design does look sick i must say check out his full picture right here he does look like an, a champion that was already existing in the game. I'll tell you his name after we'll talk about his skills first of all. On the A1, this champion attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 50%, let's say 50% when you book it, of placing provoke. Right? When it's a counter attack, the chances of placing provoke will be increased by an additional 50%. That means a 100% chance to place provoke when he's counter attacking on this A1. You will need accuracy for this to land on the enemies, right? As usual. So basically, if somebody is hitting him, or if he has counter attack on himself and somebody hits him, when he's returning that attack to the person, it's a hundred percent chance to provoke that person with enough accuracy. That's a useful A1. That's a unique one. It's sort of a way, sort of it's kind of useful, yes. Provoke only when you counter attack. On the A2, attacks all enemies before attacking has a 75% chance of decreasing the duration of all enemies' buffs. So that's almost a buff cleanse, almost removing their buffs on them, but you're just removing, reducing it by one turn. So, and also a 75% chance of placing decreased speed on the enemies. It can be booked up to a 100% chance of removing their buff by one turn or placing decreased speed on them. You can do both of them if they don't have any buffs blocking your decreased speed. So that's what they're saying. This skill can be used in the Iron Twins Fortress because that's where you probably need decrease speed. But AoE decrease speed has a lot more places you can use them even in wave content than just against Iron Twins uh, single boss. So this is on a three-turn cooldown again. So that's also 
kind of weird that they will mention that one. And then on the A3, Flawless Strat Stratagem, a six ton cooldown which can be booked up to a four ton cooldown, places ally protection and increased defense. Those are the two things, two main buffs that this place. It will also place counter attack on himself and a shield buff on himself. The value of the shield is proportional to his defense. He's a defensive based champion. His A2 hits, but his A3 does not hit, right? So his only damage dealing ability is the A2 and A1. That's the only time he will be hitting the enemies. The rest of the time, he will be probably doing this ally protection and increased defense, putting counter attack to use his A1 more often, and then a shield based on his defense. So that's a weird one. You usually see shield based on champions, max HP. But since it's a defensive based champion, that say your shield should be your, based on your defense. That's a good one. That's that's a good one. That means this champion will be tanky and hard to take down with high shield and high defense. That is going to be a very, very tanky champion. Now, what makes him a little bit special is that he doesn't just place ally protection and increase defense. He also places a shield on himself to protect himself and then this counter attack. That's what sets him apart from other counter attack. I mean, other ally protection champions we already seen in the game. I'm gonna show you a champion who does exactly what he does. And if you have that champion, you probably will not need this legendary. I told you I'll be coming to this one with some negative vibes. Protect the troops is this passive that whenever this champion is attacked, he heals himself by one percent of each 500 defense he has. So let's say he has 1,000 defense. That's a two percent heal. Let's say he has um 2000 defense that's a four percent heal let's say it has up to 3000 defense that's a six percent heal every time he's attacked this heal will happen whenever this champion is in attack it will happen it doesn't say he has to be under counter attack or shield for him to be healed no whenever he will hit this champion he will heal himself by five to ten percent of his um defense i guess that's a strange one. So you're probably looking to build this champion with 4,000 defense and get up to what? 6%? 6 6 heal? Every time he's attacked. It's not by hit though. Just whenever you hit him, he gets the healing for himself. He also heals all allies under ally protection buff placed by this champion by 30% of this skill's initial heal. So let's say he heals himself by 5%. Whatever number he you see of that, he'll just take 30% of that heal and give to his other allies. So he does a little bit of healing. We'll have to see this in battle to actually tell if it's a good heal or you still need somebody else to uh, keep your allies some healing. So that's a good champion. Increase ally, I mean increase accuracy in um, all battles by 60 is a weird one for a defensive based champion. Just giving defense. Aura and it to be perfect, but you're giving an aura which makes no sense. He does need accuracy though on the A2, that's his only skill. As also the A1, I guess that's why it makes sense to give him accuracy in all battles by 60. But for a defensive tank like this, we usually want to see him in the leader slot, defense his own battles, even if he's going to be a 25 to 30 percent defense in all battles. It would have been better aura for him than accuracy because I tell you, a lot of people will not rely on his um speed you will not rely on accuracy on this champion they'll think they'll prioritize this a3 as the main reason why you need him in the, in the in your team remember ally protection and increased defense are two buffs that you need in content like the clan boss at least elegant clan boss when you don't now have killables yet and it also be keeping your allies alive in content like the hydra and any other um wave content right here and ally protection and increased defense is best way to stay alive it's not viable in pvp content but general PvE content, this is a good skill. As for the decrease speed, it's it's we have a lot of champions who have it, but if you don't have a champion who is doing decrease speed for you, there you go, you have another one. As for this other chance to decrease the duration of enemies buff by one turn, it's not a high priority um, skill. It's not. If you want, if I wanted enemies to remove buffs on them, I'll bring somebody else. I'll bring a buff stripper. I'll bring a Madam Series. I'll bring. Um, there are a lot of champions who can remove buffs or even stop the enemies from putting buffs on themselves in the first place. That's how we would like to deal with it. But if they made it remove two by two duration or remove two buffs or something, it would have been better. But I guess they didn't want to make him too broken. So it's either you build him for this A2, I mean this A3, or you're building him for this 
a to but i doubt a lot of people will build him for this reason all right let me know in the comments what you think about this champion that's his uh, character design right here he's coming on the 31st of august it will be a fragment fusion which means when i put out that fusion calendar that probably will be a way of why we can skip out on one or two events this probably will be a fusion where they will not force us to do both champion chase and summon rushes i hope so because you can see they bring game changing champions like the previous one unkillable a bit block damage or yeah unkillable champion hemic and now they bring the next one is not at the high level they need to balance it up a little bit give you something good give you something mid mid mid, mid range and then give you something bad before give you something good so it's not going to be all fusions must be game breaking game changing legendaries no i don't support that type of um, thinking so we appreciate them for putting down this one my noob to pro was thinking of skipping out on this fusion will it be game changing for me no i don't think so and um, this faction wall is also not that difficult to complete the high elves is extremely easy to complete once you get your avatar you get your apothecary. to carry high elves is done so that's one reason I'm, I'm hoping to build an unkillable team because i already have um trunk hat right i don't already have a emic trunk hat so i'm not looking to build a ally protection team that's what i'm trying to say i'm not looking so he is not a champion i will use for clan boss despite the fact that he will be used useful in a lot of other places i'd rather go unkillable or block damage than to put ally protection to as a way of surviving as for my main account, he is not going to serve me in any way. He's just going to be one of those ones we get for the purpose of going for him and get him. So will the to Pro be going for this fusion? When, when we see the fusion calendar, if it's easy, yes. But if it's difficult, no. Will I be saving resources from now to see by then in three days time whether I'll have enough resources to go for it? Maybe. So it's a skip for the to Pro except the calendar looks like we can skip one event summon rush or champion chase if we have to complete both i would not do it in terms of the gems i don't even have enough gems i have like 900 gems left over there so that's also another reason why i'm skipping out on him because i did not save for a fusion and i want to skip out on it on the new pro so we can develop our account so let me know in the comment if you are going for this fusion despite being drained for resources from the previous one because you can see if i head over to my game i'll tell you what this champion can also already be compared to Head over to your champion index and look at your veggies. Yes, it's also from the high elves. He's a fancy version of veggies, basically. A more fancier version. Veggies, what does it do? Also brings that ally protection and increased defense on a three turn cooldown. <laughs> you thought I wasn't going to compare it. Yes, this champion does have that um, ally protection and increased defense on a three turn cooldown. Why is the legendary having it on a four turn cooldown? Can somebody explain that? Because he adds counter attack and shield to his own. Is that the reason why? So this should have been on a three turn cooldown. I, I told you guys I'm going, I'm not crazy about this one because I knew right once I was reading his skill, I just knew that he compared a lot with veggies. So that wasn't. A good one veggies also has his heal his continuous heal which is as good as that five to ten percent heal that this champion will be doing for himself so that's also a heal right here from for veggies and also a shield places shield on this champion equal to ten percent of their max hp this might be even a bigger shield than this dude's shield but his own is conditional so i'm not trying to compare both of them i just feel like if you already have a veggies or any other champion doing ally protection, this might not be the reason to go for this champion. Life protection and increased defense is not a unique thing. Being on the fourth on cooldown doesn't make it also unique. And then that counter attack on the A1 kind of gives him a unique and plus his passive. So let's see what others have to say about him. I just feel like he's very comparable to Veggies, even in character design and even in their kit. And Veggies does have that increased defense in all dungeons by 33%. Considering this is a PvE champion, this is one that will serve you in place of this new um what's his face again what's his name islin so i'm curious to know what others think about him when he's finally launching into the game obviously we can see this is not a damage dealer we can see he's a tanky champion who will just bring a little bit of utility into your games and let me know in the comments if you're going for it or if you're, sk or if you're skipping it i just gave you my two cents about it hyped him up a little then brought him right back to the level of veggies don't forget to like and subscribe 
for more daily raid challenge content and news as they come up we'll see if in three days time we have enough resources to get in or skip later that.